Wood, pues bueno, es una banda legendaria que lleva más de 20 años eh, tocando. Son italianos. Eh, ellos eh, crearon uno de los subgéneros del Doom, del Stoner. Eh, combinaron a la perfección estos riffs lentos, pesados, con la psicodelia y los sintetizadores. Ahí, a la, a la par, por supuesto. También hicieron un proyecto llamado Maleus, Maleus Art, que bueno, se, es uno de los talleres de serigrafía de arte más importantes en el mundo. Han trabajado con cualquier banda que ustedes me digan, los Foo Fighters, los Deftones, Iron Fire, Judas Priest, quien ustedes quieran, ellos han hecho pósters para ellos. Y bueno, lo que tengo aquí es uno de sus álbumes, pero justo combina ambas partes, la serigrafía y por supuesto también el, el rock espesote. ¿no? Este es un ejemplo de lo que es Maleus Art, para que lo vayan topando. Y pues bueno, la entrevista está en inglés, espero les guste. Eh, ¿Qué les puedo decir en general por si no topan chido eh, el idioma? Digo, no es que ellos o sea muy bueno, pero pues bueno, lo intentamos, ¿no? Ellos italianos, nosotros mexicanos. Pero bueno, nos dicen prácticamente en la entrevista que quieren venir a México, que es uno de sus sueños tocar aquí en Latinoamérica en general. Nos platicaron un poco de la historia de la banda, cómo crearon estos sonidos. Eh, hablamos en dos partes, también estuvo todo el equipo de Maleus, estuvieron en su taller, de hecho, ahí en Italia. Y también presentan... A Lebré, que es el nuevo baterista, la salida de, de Vita. Y bueno, espero disfruten mucho esta entrevista. Eh, la vamos a tener por ahí muy pronto. Y bueno, les presento el último lanzamiento de Ufo Mamut. Esto es en vivo en el Radborn, tocaron el IP. Y bueno, ahí nos van a explicar qué hay detrás de este álbum, qué hay detrás de todos los símbolos que usan, qué hay, cuál es la idea de Ufo Mamut, que es en realidad algo más grande que una banda. Así que bueno, si ahí nos hacen el favor en cabina. Nos vamos a dejar con esta entrevista con Ufa Mamut. Regresamos para ver al terror en vivo. Así que ya se la sabe, gócela. Está aquí en Bands Channel 666. Everybody, welcome to Bands Channel 666. Today I have a, an amazing, uh, an amazing guest for for this uh, for this show. So we have Ufa Mamut for you, one of the best bands in Italy, more than 20 years uh, working and working hard. So thank you for joining us, guys. We know this is your first interview in Mexico. How are you? We are good. Good. Everything good, is thank good. you. Thank yeah. you for calling us. Yeah, no, my, my pleasure, my pleasure. The first question for you, of course, is please uh, tell us how you discovered rock and roll and which bands were your main influence uh, at the time. Well, <laughs> it's... it's uh, Yeah, it's, it's a question that uh, it's very um, uh, important for every band. I mean, every, every musician, of course. And rock and roll has always been part of my childhood because my, my, my parents were used to listen to the Beatles. So uh, I had this uh, sort of imprinting uh, with, the, with the Beatles music in my ears. When, when I was uh, when I was uh, a child, so I must say Beatles were the first band uh, I have uh, met with my ears when I was young. Yeah. How about uh, you? For guys? me, I started uh, differently because uh, my, my parents listen. My my father, I think, uh, he doesn't listen to anything, and my mother <laughs> to some Italian music uh, and so on. So. I started, uh, let's say, with the uh, punk rock uh, first, and then when I met Poya, he met me. He, he, he told me about bands like Led Zeppelin, for example, and things uh, grew little by little. So um, this was uh, the short story from <laughs> punk to metal and so on. Yeah, for me it's quite the same because uh, uh, my parents. Uh, used to listen Italian music, uh, but I remember uh, a little vinyl. It was a uh, black dog from uh, uh, from Led Zeppelin. And so I think I think it was the first uh, record I had. So I started there. So and then I think I came across um, I think Marilyn Manson and something yeah. punk and metals yeah it was, yeah, it was that, not <laughs> that, that's how we discover i discovered rock and roll in the high school it's almost the same same story my yeah. parents listen different kind of music more traditional mexican music 
Then one guy told me, hey, you should listen to Zeppelin. It's like, oh my God, this is fucking awesome. I can't believe it. <laughs> so it, it yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. The next question for you guys is, can you share with us how you start the band and how was the local scene in those days uh, at the end of the 90s? Well, we, we started, yes, um, in 1999, and uh, me and Urlo were playing in another band when we were young. And uh, when we, uh, when the drummer left, we decided to keep on going with the, with the, with new music, and we started uh, a new project that we called, uh, as you know, Ufo Mammut. And in the first, in the previous project, we were singing in Italian, oh. and in the in the new one, we decided to to move toward English, and the first goal to reach was to. To, to go around uh, the, uh, Europe just for um, this, just for find out if we were able to to play in Europe and not only in Italy. So we yeah. started this way because at the time uh, we we were um, in, in, into a sort of uh, renaissance of, of uh, rock music uh, due to the. Uh, explosion of the grunge music let, let's yeah. say nirvana and all the scene around seattle and all the scene about that that uh, um, period when 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 the rock and roll was were still again a big thing so we were lucky enough to 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 grow up uh, in in that uh, moment yeah so, also in the indie scene there were bands like uh, Sleep, Caius, and uh, yeah. God Machine, things like that, that were uh, coming out, Melvin's, uh, and so on. So uh, it was a, an incredible period when we started in playing. And uh, I remember the, the first uh, trio were uh, Poi and me and this cousin, Tabor. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it, we, we started uh, a couple of songs like uh, Super Junket and uh, Nowhere. Uh, were born from this uh, trio. Then after um, uh, he lived in another part of uh, Italy, so we had uh, to think about uh, doing something easiest. And uh, Vita came to the join the band, and uh, we played together for twenty years, almost twenty one, oh, yes. until uh, uh, what it is last year or two years ago? It was uh, two years, years ago. Yeah, yeah. The end of almost two years ago. Two thousand and nineteen. Yeah. yeah. He left the band and then uh, we said, oh, okay, let, let's go on with the uh, Ufo Mammoth. We, can, we cannot uh, kill uh, uh, the mammoth. Oh, yeah, the creature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we were friends with uh, Levre since a lot of time. We had a, a side project with him and so it was natural to ask him to join the band and uh, we are very happy about it. Yeah. He's That's young uh, and uh, so it's... Uh, fresh air for us yeah, that's really really cool actually i have a question about about that because you record a new album so i want to ask you how do you feel with with in the band if anything changed in your sound or or what what's uh, how do you feel at this point with this new lineup well uh it's different because uh, uh he has uh, a different uh style, different face yeah. is uh, and um, compared to Vita. So it's something totally different. And uh, when we started the new Ufo Mammoth, we, we didn't want to do the same things and whatever. So we say, okay, let's start from uh, like it's a uh, Ufo Mammoth 2.0, something that we have to discover and so on. And uh, I mean, we are very happy because uh, things the new music and uh, new songs come came very very easily and naturally and uh, he's a very talented guy so uh, i'm happy about his new record and uh, I, I hope all the people around will be happy too when yeah, it will be out yeah we don't care too much about people so we we, we would be happy if we if we are happy so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. That's the best. No, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah but you're right. Uh, well, yeah, the, the main thing is that we have to be happy about the. Yeah, yeah. Well, back well, in time, how, how uh, I have a question because God, uh, 
God Like Snake was your first release. Uh, I think you create something new by combining the heavy sound of doom with psychedelia and synths. So can you tell us uh, a little bit how the record, how you record this album? How you discover this sound? Because it's very unique. <laughs> God likes me. Huh? Yeah. Well, the, the, the sound we have is, uh, I think, uh, the most important thing is that we we are not that good in playing music. So uh, this helps a lot. Because, uh, we just go on the strings and uh, and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. And uh, <laughs> then since the beginning, we we try to be heavy, but also very psychedelic. Uh, so. It was um, a research of sound, of course, but also a research of uh, trying to find uh, how to be evil yes. uh, in different ways. So, uh, let's musically, I'm not speaking about as a human being. Yeah, I don't think talking I'm, about dark yeah. things and something like that, I think since your album Eve, uh, themes relate with God, the devil, and occult themes became more present. Can you tell us more about these concepts? The relationship with the artwork and a bit of the meaning of the symbols. For example, in the video worship, you you present different symbols. So I'm very curious about about this relationship with God, with the with the dark things, with the symbols. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we've always been uh, fascinated by the connection between symbols and uh, visuals appearance and the music. So. Um, I mean, it's it's not easy to, in, in few words, to um, um, explain everything yeah. about this connection because every record uh, has his own uh, uh, symbolism. Yes, uh, you were speaking yes. about about Eve, and uh, we, we can say that Eve speaks about rebellion. So it, it's is nothing uh, related to re religion. Yes, but it's more related to to human beings and to how humans can be uh, in search for, uh, of their own limits. So Eve symbolizes the, 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 the search for, for knowledge. We, we can say that most part of our, if, if, if I can use this word, poetic, yes, yes. is uh, related to this uh, trying to, to reach our limits and uh, to find new ways. Just because we don't want to get bored doing always the same things, and the symbols are uh, are uh, a way for exploring the inner self in some way. Okay, well, that that's amazing because you create something conceptual, conceptual albums, and for me this is very important. You know, it's not just the music. I mean, you add the art, you add visuals, you have these ideas behind your music, and that's why for me, for my month, is very unique you know because you combine different things so thank you for, for explaining us that and my brother had a special question for you guys <laughs> about freak valley so uh, i will read the, these questions this my brother says when i saw you set at freak valley festival i was blown away almost literally by the massive wall of sound you guys made and i guess that is part uh is cheap thanks to your sound lord i also noticed that some food controllers for video if not uh, wrong so are there any specific considerations for your live shows that differ from from what you use normally in the studio well um a big part of uh, how we sound live is obviously uh, thanks to chicho our sound lord is uh, the the fourth element of uh ufo mammoth because uh, uh, i think that without him uh, we've never been able to have this sound then we we have uh, when we record uh, a new album, we usually think about uh, how to transpose it uh, in visuals. So yes. since the beginning, uh, we had these uh, visuals because uh, it was good good for distracting people from looking at us, and uh, the <laughs> bad way we play. And, uh, and uh, no, I think that is a <clears throat> great to. Uh, give to the people something that is more an experience than just a, a live show. And uh, the visuals are uh, from uh, Maleus, uh, from Lou of Maleus, especially uh, our, uh, let's say, 
art project we have uh, here in Italy, and as we have always taken care about uh, this part. And uh, while live, we usually play the music and uh, do the visuals uh, all together mm. using a couple of softwares and uh, so on. Yeah, we control everything from the stage, apart yeah. from the from the sound that yeah. is uh, uh, on the sh shoulder of Ciccio. All the all the extra sounds, the layers, the uh, synthesizer sounds are all controlled by by ourselves on the stage. Uh, it's 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 a way for uh, uh, avoiding the uh, one third people man, band member on stage. We are three people, so we yeah. always love to be three and on stage. It's, it's, like, it's a lot of work. Like, probably you need an, an extra person on stage. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's why we have a, a younger drummer now. <laughs> we are going to so exploit him. <laughs> I can control everything. <laughs> Run faster and yes. everything. <laughs> well, now I have a question about your label, Supernatural Cat Records. How it came to be and what's your approach when releasing your, your new stuff? And I know you guys take the do-it-yourself approach on this very seriously. So can you tell us about your, your label, Supernatural? Yeah, we, we started uh, Supernatural Cat as um, a Malleus project, a side project uh, in 2005, if I'm not wrong, uh, when we released the uh, Lucifer songs. Yes. And uh, since the beginning, we, we thought about the idea of having the records like something unique and uh, very peculiar so uh, creating and printing the all the covers and uh, uh, <clears throat> by seal screen and made seal screen uh, something that was uh, handicrafted in a different way from what is uh, the usual uh, let's say the regular editions of uh, albums and so on uh, of course we we put out also the regular versions for all the albums but the limited editions uh, is something that yeah, we, we loved from the beginning and the, the do-it-yourself approach was uh and it is uh something that we 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 follow since the beginning with uh also we do for mammoth is uh, something that uh we, we like to go on tour on uh driving our home van uh doing all these kind of things because it's something that is more uh i don't know uh in some way it's a punk thing but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something you it makes uh feeling you more what you are doing yeah and uh, at the end you have the control of, of all the the things yeah. you know so that's yeah. very important i think in this kind of project and well now i want yeah. to ask you uh, about uh, if you well do you have have any other musical projects aside from ufo mamut and that would you like to share us with us? I'm aware uh, the moon is from from Urlo, so I know you uh, uh, guys have any other projects uh, aside from Mamut. Well, I, I have a, like you said, uh, this uh, side project that is called the Moon, and uh, then we have um, since uh, a lot of years <laughs> this project that uh, I hope that one day will uh, put out the album uh, that is uh, Poi and Me, together with uh, Lorenzo and uh, Federico of Lento, another Italian band. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is called uh, Far West Zombie. And uh, we recorded uh, these things, uh, I don't know, it was... Uh, Ten years ago? Yeah, probably more than two wow. more. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, uh, you yeah, know, Ch the... Chinese democracy yeah. from, from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> 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 I think one day you will, you will hear about that. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, then we had this project with Levre also before uh, he joined Ufo Mammoth, so it's no more, of course. No more. Okay, and, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I, um, I used to to produce some techno music also. Wow, <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the project is the overdose uh, okay. next to, to my... Uh, a friend of mine, and then I, I usually um, compose some music for theaters. So wow. by myself, you know, so for for plays, and 
that's it. So okay, this, okay. This is my story. Okay, I have yeah. two more questions for you guys about Ufa Mahmoud, and then we are going to talk about Maleus. The the first question is if you know any bands from Mexico or Latin America. Yeah. Apart from the biggest one like Sepultura, of course, yeah, and things yeah. like that. Okay. I like uh, Deaf Kids. Okay. I think they are from Brazil. Then uh, other. Natas. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Natas. Yeah, Natas. Yeah, from Argentina. Yeah, yeah. Brujeria. Brujeria. Brujeria, yes. <laughs> we should have prepared more for this. Yes. <laughs> uh, at some point, I will share some bands with you guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 please, yeah, absolutely, please do it. Please. Now, I'm sure we we know some more, but in this moment, uh, you know the emotion. Yes. Of the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> and and well, the next question is about if any if there is any chance that you come to Mexico, South America in the future. I know not now to COVID, but in the future, any plans? Do do you like to come to visit these places? Personally, I would I would love. I think everybody uh, yeah. to come to Mexico. I, I've been fascinated since a long long time about the the culture there and and the places and also the 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 seaside okay the, yeah 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 so, sounds good yeah i mean the amazing the, place two years ago we started the first doom stoner doom festival here i mean big festival with a thousand of people attend that festival i mean Ra mm. was the headliner also mantar and the obsess so finally the people mm. start to discover this kind of sounds i know it's late for mexico in europe it's very popular But I think it's very possible that you guys come at some point to Mexico. And as I told you, you have a lot of fans here in South America. So we hope to see you soon here. Yeah, yeah. You have to call us when uh, it will be able to. So yeah, we will come for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, now let's talk about Maleus. Uh, so talking a little bit about Maleus, it has been around since 2002, if I'm not wrong and has been closely yeah. tied with the visuals of the band. So can you tell us a little bit uh, the history of the collective and the work, uh, uh, the work that you do, do over there? Yeah, we, we started uh, with, with our first band that, that I was telling you before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were used to do everything about that band. So the small posters, Xerox, we, we were hanging on the walls of our town for the concerts. And then also the graphic of our uh, early demo tapes. Everything concerning the band was always by ourselves, by, by me and, and, and Joe and Urlo. Yes. And then the, we decided to move this attitude uh, towards the uh, outside. So towards other bands, so we started doing uh, uh, posters for concerts uh, for uh, people around uh, Europe. We, we met on the internet uh, these two guys from Belgium, and we started doing that for, uh, for some uh, some years. So we, we designed the posters for the, for the concerts for uh, these two guys that, that were organizing concerts in Belgium. And little by little, these things became a, a real job. Yeah. And we and we we, we, we met three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We met we met Lou, and we decided to. Lou that and... is here with us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that will be amazing. Hola, hola, hello. Small group of people. Yeah, it takes it. Join us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we are three people now again, but yes. uh, someone has changed. Yeah. Hey, well, the next question about Maleus is: I think uh, that nowadays a Maleus artwork, is especially geek posters, is easily recognized in you style of illustration has established with, within heavy music scene and beyond. Which artists would you say have your an influence to your style? A lot of artists, uh, because, uh, well, there are some artists that are 
surely more an inspiration for us, uh, like uh, Alphonse Mucha, for example, that yeah. is uh, an yeah, yeah. Yeah. artist, or uh, or Rick Griffin yeah. on the other side, the other let's side. say. But we 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 try to take inspiration from uh, everything that uh, comes to us uh, for. Um, in the art scene, so from uh, movies to uh, comics uh, to whatever, from music and so on. So there, there's not only a few inspiration, and it would take uh, an hour yeah. to tell you all the names. And uh, <laughs> so everything we we see, we follow, we we discover. Uh, can become an inspiration for us and for what we do that is, uh, like you said, mainly is a uh, silk screen printing and uh, so on. Yeah. Uh, talking about movies, uh, you collaborated with Dario Argento. So how was that experience? Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of the horror movies and Dario Argento is, you know, one of the, the top guys. So how was work with, with Dario? We didn't work uh, directly with Dario Argento. Uh, but with an um, English gallery, uh, who gave us uh, this uh, project to, to develop. So we, um, we choose, uh, I think, seven or nine, nine, nine movies okay. from wow. uh, Dario and uh, we create this uh, poster uh, series. Um, and uh, actually, he's, uh, he knows about this uh, poster uh, series for sure, because uh, we, we also met him in person uh, during some uh, film festival, uh, and yeah, he was very happy about it, uh, and uh, very, and he is also a very nice person. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of the Italian horror movies, and also the how to pronounce Giallo Giallo movies from the 70s. Yeah, 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 Giallo. Yeah. So it's, I'm so it's really nice. It's a really nice experience. And well, you have collaborated with. A lot of big bands like a Foo Fighters, Robert Plant, Deftones, and more. So, do you have some uh, favorite pieces of art? I mean, talking about your creation, your posters. Do you have some favorite posters or moments with the bands, maybe? Yeah, we have many actually. But at the moment, I, I can recall uh, uh, the poster we we did for Prodigy. Yeah. And it was a real pleasure because apart from the from the poster, we had the chance to meet them uh, before the show, and they were so nice as well. And they uh. they thanked us, they thanks uh, us a lot. And it was a a blast of a concert. It was uh, perfect. We met the band. Uh, they were happy. We were happy, and we, uh. we we saw one of the best concert of our life. So it's. I remember that with, with pleasure. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah I, I have a. This is more like a technical question. Of course, my English is not the best to talk about the techniques and things like that. But I want to ask you if you use like a, a special process to create these posters. Because I know in the United States they use machines, you know, for printing the, the posters or, or t shirts. But I know if you use machines or you do it with the things by yourself. So we. Uh, well. The process is almost the same usually yeah. for a seal screen, but uh, we print our posters uh, all by hands. Uh, we pull them by hands, and uh, I mean we have a table, but it's uh, just a mechanical one that takes the a vacuum table. Yeah, the seal screen up yeah, and yeah. down. The seal, uh, the, the screen up and down. But we we then print by hands uh, everything because. Uh, we, we think that uh, if we have to do something that is artistic, yes. uh, it should be also something that is uh, handicraft uh, yes. and not uh, done by machinery. Otherwise, it's like uh, printing in a printing shop or whatever. And uh, it would be more in industrial than artistic. So we, we try to do everything by hand. And we also built our uh, oven and uh, our oh. equipment. Yeah. Really yeah, cool. is yeah, and also I know you released a, a book about the artwork of Ufo Mahmoud by Maleus, but I know if you have any plans or I, I don't know if you release a book about Maleus in general, the, the artwork of Maleus like this one, I, this is like, uh, it's called Metal and Hardcore Graphics, so this is a special, uh, it's, it's a different, different artist from around the world, so basically the 
the book share different artists and you have some special part here you know about you guys your, your artworks i don't know if you have any book about maleus in, uh, in specific uh, this is more like a, a question a personal question we we did one in uh, 2008 or 2009 hmm. yeah. with all the the production uh, all the, the the posters we did till then and we, since then we 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 wanted to do something different but we, we never something collecting all the posters yeah. and uh, and so on but we we just did a i think a couple of uh, little books uh, yeah yeah for a show in torino and uh, and the main one was the Hammer of God yeah. in okay. 2003, yeah. I guess. And yeah. it was uh, yeah, like a catalog of all our works until uh, 2008. Then uh, we made a lot of other posters. And now we have to, to think, we, we'd like to, to make some other uh, Yeah, the, the, the first book was, uh, um, let's say, uh, self-produced so we we paid for everything and for the printing and everything and we had we had no real distributions uh, because because it's a different uh, kind of thing for us it's not like the music yes. and for the next one we we would love to to study a different approach for the yeah. for the book but it's it's a it's a different uh, thing I, yeah. I would love to have a new book but it's difficult yeah. yeah we will be aware about that book in some point and i in mexico we have like a company called mercadorama so mercadorama bring a lot of artists who create this kind of poster so i hope in some point you can bring your posters here to mexico it would be amazing or create something with, with this guy so this is uh, a possibility oh, oh sorry <laughs> and i i i well i don't know if I don't have, I think, more questions. I ask everything as a fan uh, of Maleus, of Ufo Mahmoud. I mean, you're a big inspiration for a lot of people here, including me, my, my small band. So thank you so much, guys, for joining us in this interview and for making this possible. This is your first interview in Mexico, and I'm so happy for that. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you have any final words for, for your fans in Mexico, talking about Maleus, Ufo Mahmoud, any news you want to share with the people in Latin America? Yeah, just just be patient and we would love to come there and we hope it will happen soon. Okay. Yeah. okay. And next year we hope with a new album out and uh, without a, any more of this uh, pandemic, maybe we, we, we will be able to come there and if not next year, the one after, but we will come to Mexico and yeah. uh, South America for sure. We'll be for waiting sure. for you guys. We're waiting for you. T t thank you so much. And well, thank you. Thanks to see, you. See you soon. Bye bye. Gracias. 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 <laughs>